Scott Wilson Williams. A killer and cannibalistic human was not found or traced until after three occurrence of his evil doing. Some of his victims were lucky to have escaped, some not, and we will be looking at that story in this video. This is the story of serial killer Scott Wilson Williams. Scott Wilson Williams, an American serial killer born on December 3, 1963 in Monroe, North Carolina, was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Three women's deaths spread over nine years led to his conviction for their crimes. He has also been found guilty of assaulting two other ladies who survived the attack. In 2006, Scott Wilson Williams was charged with murdering three women in North and South Carolina. He pleaded guilty by entering an Alford plea, and he was subsequently sentenced to life in prison without parole. By entering an Alford plea, Williams is effectively admitting that the prosecution has sufficient evidence to win a conviction at trial. As a result of the deaths of Sharon Tucker Stone, Christina Christie Parker, and Sharon House Presley, Williams was charged with three counts of first-degree murder and kidnapping. The bullets recovered from the victims matched those discovered in firearms he kept at home, according to ballistics tests. In connection with the deaths of Sharon Tucker Stone, Christina Christie Parker, and Sharon House Presley, Williams was charged with three charges of first-degree murder and kidnapping. A field in Chesterfield County, South Carolina, was the location where the bodies of Stone, last month, Parker, 2004, and Presley, 1997, were discovered. About 10 miles from Williams' house in the north of Union County is where Parker and Presley's remains were discovered. Williams was also charged with attempted first-degree murder and sex assault for an incident involving an unnamed woman who was attacked by Williams but managed to get away. Williams, according to the police, was resident of Monroe and had a clean record. Williams is cooperating with investigators and has provided a great deal of information, Kathy said. He was a man of few words, did some work, but he wasn't as shy as everyone thought, Kathy added. However, Kathy was cautious to label the man a serial killer. He said the killings were unplanned consequences of his behavior. In other words, he was evasive about the situation. At the news briefing, authorities did not provide details on any physical evidence they had found. At first glance, it may appear that Scott Williams fits the profile of a serial murderer working within a larger network. He's working, though not particularly well. He leads a typical existence, deviating only when his imaginations get the best of him and drive him to commit crimes. Given that he works for the state government, he probably drives a Department of Transportation vehicle, which are common sights all around the state. Even if parked on a gravel road or next to a busway, it wouldn't look out of place. Because of the nature of his work, he is also able to travel extensively within his region, something that is characteristic of organized criminals. Since no physical evidence has been made public, we are left wondering if Williams has confessed or if they were able to convince themselves through interviews that he is their top suspect. Authorities believe the same person is responsible for the deaths of three women over a nine-year period and evidence from autopsies and witness testimony points in that direction. Experts in criminal justice say this matches the profile of a serial killer who grew braver over time and made clear attempts to alleviate a compulsion stemming from a traumatic event. Three accusations of first-degree murder, one count of attempted murder, one case of first-degree forcible sex offense, and four counts of kidnapping were filed against Scott Wilson Williams, a resident of Clontz Long Road in Northern Union County, on Thursday. Between, 1990, between 1997 and February of this year, he is accused of murdering Sharon House Presley, Christina Parker, and Sharon Stone. In 2000, he allegedly attacked another woman, but she managed to get away. Few specifics, including the circumstances of the bodies or the evidence linking Williams to the killings, have been provided by the Union County Sheriff's Office. However, Sheriff Eddie Cathy has not labeled the suspect a serial killer. It was his contention that the victims weren't taken for the aim of murder. They were kidnapped and then murdered. But he wouldn't say anything more than that. A judge sealed the search warrant documenting the findings from last week's investigation into Williams's home on Monday. On Tuesday, the observer acquired autopsies for Presley, whose body was discovered roughly 10 miles from Williams's house in 1997 and Parker, whose body was discovered roughly 10 miles from Williams's house in 2004. According to autopsies and officials, 
all three ladies were shot to death before being disfigured. Autopsies reveal that both women were sexually mutilated, but the number of mutilations on the second victim was far higher. Thirdly, authorities claim that victim Stone was decapitated and dismembered. Requests for a copy of Stone's autopsy report to Chesterfield County, South Carolina, Coroner Donnie Baker went unanswered. Her dead body was discovered in a nearby field. According to the authorities, Williams shared a high-risk lifestyle with the other two women. Williams filed a $80,000 lawsuit against a Union County hairstylist in December 1993, alleging that the man had sexually assaulted him for 20 years, starting when Williams was eight years old. The lawsuit was settled privately, and the terms are under wraps. The defendant in Williams' lawsuit refuted Williams' claims. According to criminology professor Paul Friday of the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, slurs often develop revenge fantasies after experiencing a significant shock in their life. He explained that as time goes on, killers' fantasies become more and more ferocious, until at some point the opportunity and the fantasy come together and a murder is committed. On Friday, a University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine assistant professor who has researched death row convicts named Lawson Bernstein claimed serial killers need to fulfill an ever-increasing appetite. The first mutilation satisfies them, but they have to escalate that because they need more satisfaction and then more and more, Friday explained. An increase in the degree of the mutilation is possible, according to neuropsychiatrist Dr. Bernstein, who stated the killer needs more mayhem to achieve psychological satisfaction, which to anyone is the height of craziness. According to the data gathered by the Union County Sheriff's Office, the killer's methods only grew more savage with time. The murders have been blamed on Scott Williams. Each woman was shot before being mutilated, as evidenced by autopsy results. All three murders took place within a nine-year time frame. According to authorities, a fourth victim managed to flee Williams and later lead deputies to the suspect. Last week, charges of first-degree murder were brought against Williams on three separate occasions. The 42-year-old criminal is currently serving time in Raleigh's central prison. Union County Sheriff's Office detectives revealed the items they seized from Williams' house after his March 9th arrest. They discovered numerous weaponry, such as knives and firearms. They stole handcuffs, hair samples, and a computer. Blood, hair, and saliva samples were taken from Williams as further DNA evidence. The Monroe Inquirer Journal, with whom we work, reports that the district attorney will seek the death penalty in this case. According to investigators, Williams murdered Sharon Stone, Sharon Presley, and Christina, Par Christina Parker. The three ladies, the police believe, all lived dangerously. All of the murders happened back in 1997. Williams has not yet been assigned a trial date. Scott Wilson Williams, who murdered three women in the Charlotte region between 1997 and 2006 and accepted a plea deal on Friday, will spend the rest of his life in prison without the possibility of release. Williams filed an Alford plea in the Superior Court of Union County. That means he admitted there was sufficient evidence to convict him of first-degree murder in the murders of all three women. The former Northern Union County worker for the state road crew was initially charged with capital murder. On the other hand, District Attorney John Snyder stated on Friday that he offered the plea deal in light of the nature of the case, the sensitivity of the victims, and the uncertainty of capital punishment. DNA and ballistics evidence from guns seized on Williams' premises were among the pieces of evidence cited by detectives. Williams' allegations, along with those of two other survivors, painted a picture for investigators of a 44-year-old man who picked up women, tortured them, and then killed them. Williams was portrayed as a fetishist, predator, sexually insecure, and often angered man. Attorney Frank Wells of Ashboro said the defense did not have any grounds on which to dispute the statements read in court on behalf of Williams. It wasn't a close call, Wells assured us. The evidence was indisputable, as they say. Judge Richard Boner of the Superior Court sentenced Williams to three consecutive life terms in prison. In 1997, Sharon House Presley passed away, and in 2004 and 2006, Sharon Tucker Stone did as well. Their bodies were discovered in remote areas of Union and Chesterfield counties in South Carolina, mangled in similar but progressively horrible ways. Williams pleaded days. 
Williams pleaded Alford to two further counts of kidnapping, rape and sexual crime in the first degree, both from 1995 and 2000. Williams released the two ladies. Previous legal representation for Williams withdrew due to insufficient resources and a deteriorating relationship with the client. After Williams' arrest, Judge Boner ordered the case files, which contained crucial information, to be sealed. Following Williams' arrest in March 2006, other news outlets, including The Observer, made requests for the files. Police reportedly raided Williams' house and took numerous weapons, including whips, chains, handcuffs, knives, and firearms. This is the end of this video. It is the best that he got caught and will spend the needed amount of time, if not forever, in jail. Make sure to give this video a like.